Okay, welcome back to the workshop. This week we're finishing off the uh, final part for this boiler feed pump uh, that we've been making. And um, we've built the body and the valve and the piston. And this final episode is uh, the handle and the other bits and pieces that go along with it. And then we'll show it in action. So the handle was probably one of the trickier parts. I had to hang on to it with this end part. But that was everything else is kind of rounded and and blobby for it being a casting so um put that in the four jaw chuck centered it up as best i could put a hole through the end and then i pressed in this piece of bar uh the handle and uh the handle and used that to hang on to it in a collet block and machine these other holes. Handle, and then I set that up. Sticking out a little bit. Um, one thing that nearly caught me out was um, the way it's supposed to work is that you drill that cross hole through uh, and put that um, pinion through which is machined uh, with a wider body and, and smaller ends. And then when, when that's in, then you have to drill through uh, for the handle. So the handle holds that in the middle and um, and keeps it all together. I was thinking it would be the other way but that would have been a disaster if I'd have put the, the rod through and then drilled through for this it would have cut it in half and it wouldn't have held together so we got that all sorted um, I once I'd finished this part I thought oh I'll press this beautiful vintage uh, Bakelite handle on there and uh, it looked like it would be fine and I pressed it on and it immediately shattered and broke uh, so what I ended up doing was making a replica of it out of um, some um, Delrin, which I had, and uh, I used a tornado to get this. Uh, I used a tornado for both parts to get that um, taper and to get that um, curved radius there and round the ends off and polished it up and came out great.
and that pressed on fine, no issues there. So um, uh, hopefully we'll insert some footage for that. Um, once we've built the, the handle, um, I had to make a slot uh, in the piston to take that, I did that, and put a, put a hole through uh, for a pin. So I um, had to make this pin. Um, and that goes through there and on the ends there's uh, there's uh, they're about 1 16th I guess um, they're uh, poles for um, split pins so these little split pins come with the kit and uh, they go in there and hold it all together and behind each split pin there's this uh, there are these washers um, and you can see that they're quite tiny and they were made by obviously just machining up a piece of bar to the correct size with a hole in it and then uh, carefully parting off the right thickness. Once I had all that, all that sorted out. So once once I had that, then I needed um, I need another pin for that top there. Actually, I think that's the one for the top. The top one goes in there. A nice sliding fit, which needed to be reamed. Um, oh, now that doesn't fit. But God. Anyway, so. Um, once, once I'd got those parts built, then I had to make these linkages and they had to be rounded on the ends, which is always a bit of a drama uh, in the workshop. But what I did was I made a little jig uh, with a pin in it and I clamped that onto my belt sander, which worked out pretty well. Once we've got all those bits done, that's pretty much it, and um, it all assembles together. Um, and I'll uh, I'll put it all together and uh, and show it on the baseboard. I put it on a baseboard with the boiler. Um, here's the boiler here in its current state. Uh, everything's apart at the moment, but uh, I've put on a I put on this pressure gauge, and it's currently full of water. Uh, and this is the connection to the feed pump. Oh, um, the other thing I needed was a source of water for the pump to draw from. So uh, a bit of brass and a few leaks of the file, and I made this um, I made this tank for it. And uh, you'll see that when I put it all together and do some more film there. So the tank was just made from sheet. And um, one of the reasons why this video has taken so long to put together was I wanted to get everything working so I could show it in action. And I needed a tank to feed some water in. Um, and also, um, there's a little, you'll see there's a little valve on there. So I wanted a valve because uh, I would pressurise it and... I think just the back pressure, the pressure in the system would just sort of seep past the stop valves, um, and it, it, it would hold pressure, but it would fairly quickly release. I couldn't find any leaks on the boiler, so I was pretty sure it was just coming back through the pump. So I put a put a valve on that, and it still does it, but it does it much more slowly. Um, so you know, you just. No, no system's perfect. I've got to, I've got to stop at some point, and um, I might have to actually fire up the boiler very soon. Um, anyway, so all right, here's the ass. So this is the uh, 
the final test to see if uh, if our little pump works so i've got it connected up to this water tank here we've got some water in this water tank and that flows through there into the inlet there and the outlet comes through this valve here into this non-return valve so we'll make sure uh, this is this is overflow so we do what we're going to do here is a pressure test on the boiler and this pressure gauge here shows the pressure in the boiler so pump that pump and you can see some air bubbles coming out there you can see some water flowing through there so we know we've got all the air out now make sure our valve is open now what should happen now is if I pump this pump we should see the pressure go up and we do so we've got that's 50 psi 100 psi uh, 150 now it's going down quite quickly but if I if I lock that that valve off still going down quite quickly where's that water coming out I don't see any leaks anywhere. This 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 pressure gauge leaks oil, which is very annoying. That's why I've got this towel here. Um, I think I'm getting a bit of leakage out of my valve here. Uh, the bottom flange needs to be tightened up, but we're holding at about seventy psi. I've done a lot more tests uh, previously. And I'm quite convinced that the boiler's sound and definitely the pump works. And uh, once I've finished doing my uh, pressure testing for the boiler, I'll put the cladding back on the boiler. And this will be just used for topping up the water level in the boiler when it's running, keeping it steamed. And uh, we'll be able to run this engine, hopefully, and, uh, and finally have a working steam plant. It's holding now about still going down slowly. Um, the main reason I put this valve on was to try and stop that that backflow. Because um, even though there's two check valves on this, it still seems to leak a little bit. I think it'll be fine under steam though. It shouldn't be an issue. So that's it. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.